I got early access to possibly the most powerful social VR platform to date, and it's giving a troubled virtual universe a new lease on life. Today, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what makes this project special, a first look at its new form, and how it's changed from its past. You know, I think we were oversold a bit on the metaverse, but there was one game that pushed for a functional virtual universe. A world where we can build anything right inside of VR, and that game was called Neos. And while it was considered by many too complicated or clunky for just hanging out online, it gained a small cult following that dedicated themselves to the game. But internal conflict regarding cryptocurrency halted Neos' development for nearly two years. Until now. Resonite is a second lease on life for Neos VR's original vision. Figuring out where to start this video has actually been a bit challenging because there's two types of people watching right now. Those wondering what the heck Resonite is, and the people who have played Neos VR wondering what's happening to their home. Let me just explain a little bit about Resonite in its current form. Most of what we see was made and programmed inside of Resonite itself. It's a lot like a game engine crossed with a social VR platform. You're not going to be throwing out Photoshop or Blender anytime soon. However, if you can get your hands on a 3D model, video, or image, you can click on the file and it'll come to life right in front of you, which is something VR chat and most other social platforms can't do. Then you can use the programming language inside of Resonite to add logic and functionality to anything you create. But all of that is just what Neos was, and it's here in Resonite. So what's new? The first thing to know about Resonite is that cryptocurrency has been completely wiped from the game. It's gone, I don't see any mention of it in any menu during my time playing. And after the events that happened with Neos and the whole NFT slash metaverse craze, I don't see anyone mourning its removal. One of the first things you'll experience with Resonite is the new player experience. It's been completely overhauled. This is a great environment to welcome new users and allow people to discover the core systems at their own pace. I'm really impressed with what they've done here. A lot of work has went into making sure the basics are easy to understand. However, I will warn you once you begin to make things inside of Resonite, Many of the same tools are similar to how they were in Neos. Powerful, but complex. I say this because VR veterans will want to get their avatar into the game as soon as possible, but I think they're forgetting all the work that actually goes into making content for a game like VRChat. Most of the avatar packages you see online are pre-made for VRChat, featuring things such as fizz bones, setting up character toggles, animations, facial gestures. All that work needs to be redone, and it can be very overwhelming on your first day. It's something that the community can help make easier. If you have a common pre-made base, reach out to someone who already has it fixed up for Resonite. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, there's a migration tool available to bring things over from Neos. The other common criticism of Neos was its overly complicated UI, and how difficult it is to get started. Resonite tries to improve these pain points, but it's still pretty familiar. You'll see the visuals have been refreshed and that things have been renamed or better organized. Other areas feel unchanged beyond the skin. It's clearly an area they focused on improving though, and it feels a lot more uniform. I'm still not a huge fan of the toolbar being on the avatar, and the world instance setup feels a bit clunky compared to VRChat's refined permission systems. And uh, press this little X to close them. But my own gripes with the inherited Neos features aside, it is an improvement. The third thing that's new to Resonite is the programming language called Protoflux. It's a visual scripting language, so you'll be able to connect nodes together to form logical behaviors. You can use the Protoflux language to control almost anything in Resonite. I think it's best to wait until more documentation is released here. I will admit, the detailed differences here are a bit deeper than I've explored myself. The wiki still has to be updated. One of the hardest things to get started with in Resonite is the programming. It's going to take some time before tutorials start coming out, and as someone who never programmed in the previous game, I ended up having to get some help from a fellow K9 in-game. I don't think most people will pick this up on their own. There is a steep learning curve here, but the possibilities are endless and the core system does feel solid. Here is a very simple program that drives the shape of my tongue with a button press. The main input is the index controller here, and everything down here are the different buttons and outputs on my controller. Controller. Over here we indicate which controller we want to use. And this one over here indicates the user of the index controller. We take the button out and put it into a conditional operator. When this button touch is true, so I am pressing the button, we're going to output a number, and that number is 1. And when it's false, we're going to output 0. We don't need to connect anything here because 0 is the default. This is the output of that conditional operator, which drives the float value on my blend shape for my tongue. And so switching back over to me, 
I press the button, blip, tongue comes out. The logic is obviously yours to imagine, but like I said, finding these inputs and outputs either in the protoflux nodes or in inspector windows can be a bit of a challenge. I've been told this menu is temporary, so maybe things will be improved in the future. And just so you know, you don't have to use a specific controller like the index, you can use a standard controller. And I also changed this user reference to get the active user of the avatar. At least I think I did. That's where the documentation would come in handy. This is another thing that threw me for a loop. I have to select the whole program. And now under my user, under my avatar, I actually create a child object called blip. That's just the name of my program. And I grab that, I use the grab. And then I use the option to pack into blep. So that whole program disappears, but the logic is now on my avatar. Just don't forget to save. But you might be wondering, why bother building things inside of VR? Surely it's easier to just build them outside and bring them in. While it's true that Resonite isn't going to be traditional desktop applications in terms of efficiency in the UI, I don't think any VR app has, but it does unlock new possibilities. For example, I was spending some time exploring the beta, and I noticed the person was drawing a small scale version of the map that they were working on with just a regular pen tool. They could then scale the entire map in front of them and get a full layout of its size. This isn't like a theoretical future workflow, this is someone being creative with the tools in game. That's just one example of what's possible with the world of Resonite, and I'll leave you to explore and discover more on your own. I'm just happy that this world has a bright future ahead.